Good evening, how is everybody today? Uh, it's Sunday, it's eight o'clock, um, in the UK anyway, it's eight o'clock, I don't know where you are. Um, so whatever time it is, um, it's always time for this. It's time to have a drink. Um, so, um, good evening to you. It's been a pretty busy week, hasn't it? Lots going on. Um, Tonight, I'm delighted to say we are joined by Guido van der Garde. So uh, he'll be along in a few minutes time. We'll link up with him. Um, I will let him explain what he's been doing all day. Uh, could lead to a very interesting half an hour or so. Uh, but yes, let me know where you are, what you're up to, if you've had a good week, bad week, indifferent week. Hopefully none of you are suffering from coronavirus. That would be good. Uh, Pit Lane Jamie says, how's the wine? The wine is delicious because at eight o'clock on a Sunday night when you've been looking after a three and a half year old who's turning into a 18 year old uh, all week, um, it's nice to just sit back and relax and uh, kind of sign off from being a mum for a little bit and sign on for being a motorsport enthusiast. That's what I'm gonna say anyway. And so much has happened this week in the world of motorsport. Daniel Apt, that all kicked off, didn't it, after last weekend? Um, so we might talk a little bit about him. Um, we may well talk about Williams being up for sale. Anybody got enough money to buy it? I would love to be able to do that, wouldn't you? It'd be amazing. Um, we've got rules that have happened, the cost caps come in. Uh, the Dutch Grand Prix not happening this year, that's been confirmed. Um, so obviously Guido will have some opinions on that. Um, virtual Le Mans happening shortly, it's the end of May. Uh, we're still rumbling on with who's going to place Ricardo at Renault. So much, so much to talk about. Um, and obviously we've also um got the whole thing about are they going to do a reverse grid in the formula one race uh for the first few rounds wherever they may be austria is obviously the starting point uh, at the beginning of july it looks like mercedes are the ones that are saying uh they don't want it to happen interesting um i just wonder how many of you think that teams in formula one should have an input into the rules in Formula One? It's always a question worth asking. Um, <laughs> uh, Bob saying, should we have a whip around? Tracy, I'd love to buy Williams. I know, so many people would. So many people. Um, so remember, if you've got any questions that you want to get in, um, get them in. There's a little question mark uh, symbol at the bottom. That means I can read through your questions at any point and don't have to scroll forward and back, which is always pretty useful. Um, so have a look at that um, and get questions in if you've got questions for me. Uh, all questions for Guido. Love to hear from you uh, tonight. And uh, we can have a little chat about life and... And what's going on in the world of Formula One and motorsports? And it does look, to all intents and purposes, like um, Austria is going to get the go-ahead. It looks like the government have said yes uh, in Austria. So all being well, that's going to happen. It also looks like uh, the government here are going to back Silverstone to happen. I'm hearing that it's going to be in August. Um, so it would go Austria, Austria, and then across to Hungary. And Hungary is always a great place to race and everyone loves it. Um, and if you look at what the Premier League have been doing with regards to testing, um, then that seems to be pretty successful. Um, they've had a 100% clean test round uh, is the latest. So there is hope for Silverstone yet and it would be a crying shame if it didn't happen. But health and safety has to come first, obviously. Um... So, uh, reverse grid. Uh, Tracy thinks it would be amazing seeing how the reverse grid works um, on the race. Esports is fantastic. Um, and Bob says reverse grids would make for some amazing racing. I mean, I know you can see those, they're on the screen, but I just thought I'd read them out because they're some of your uh, opinions and uh, you're vocalising them, so why wouldn't I? Um, and am I going to be travelling to Austria? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> If I'm being very honest with you, I don't know yet. I'm thinking, no, I won't have to. Um, but uh, I'm yet to hear. So I'm in a holding pattern as much as most people are. And uh, when someone decides to let me know, 
uh, I will, I'll let you know. But I'm guessing for the first few rounds, um, it'll be a case of me being back here with the boys and the racing will be, I think it's going to be restricted to about 80 people um, for the teams. And I'd, I'd be surprised how many media actually go or are allowed to go. We should wait and see, but I would imagine it'll be Formula One covering everything for everybody. They'll create a world feed and everybody um, back at base will um, do their commentary. I'm hearing some people want to go out and do their commentary on site um, from Austria, but uh, yeah, I've yet to hear exactly how many people will be going. Um, and I think the opportunity for people to stay at home and to minimise the amount of people in the paddock will be um, something that they're very keen to do. Um, so that's, I think that's where we are at the moment. Doesn't really help you very much. Doesn't help me either particularly. <laughs> um, but that's where we are. Um, so who had tickets for Zanfort? That's another thing I'd like to know. Um, were there lots of you that have ended up disappointed? Or has it only just been... Um, a few of you. I know they've been waiting so long, haven't they? 35 years they've been waiting for a race. And uh, uh, it just looks like they're going to have to wait another year. But um, when it happens, it's going to be amazing. Uh, right, I need to find Guido. That's what I need to do at this moment in time. And until he signs on, I don't think I can link up with him. So um, I'm going to have to probably shout at my other half and get him to <laughs> try and get keto for us. Um, because I think if I disappear from here, I'm gonna disappear. Let me just um, see if this is gonna work. Where are you, Guido? Um, there's a cat outside the window as well, <laughs> just in case you're wondering, what's she looking at? Um, where are you, Guido? Come on. Um, he did say he was gonna join us. However, he also did say that he'd been quite busy today. Uh, so goodness knows um, when he'll uh, get to us um, and I will ask him um, about this uh, the 30 day idol challenge which he's been doing which has been hilarious I don't know if any of you have seen it but I've got some of the um, pictures from it that I want to share with you because they're just they are genius right now I'm going to try and get Guido so uh, if we go right Apparently I paused. I don't know whether I paused or not, but um, fingers crossed, Guido, as if by magic, will suddenly appear um, on our feed, because if not, it's just gonna be me and you chatting. Nothing wrong with that. I love chatting to you guys, which is really fine. Um, but as I said earlier, uh, if you've got any questions, get them in, you can use at the bottom or wherever it is on your screen, the little um, question sign. Um, and uh, you can get your questions into me or to Guido or you can just ruminate with each other if you want uh, and let me know what you're drinking tonight as well. I am drinking, I think it's a Sauvignon Blanc uh, from New Zealand, um, a place I have never been to, but it's very nice. Um, and hopefully wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you have had a pleasant day. Thank you for joining me uh, on Instagram. Now, I want to find out from you guys um, what your favourite Grand Prix is. The one that you've either been to or that you've watched on telly, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to say to you, right, okay, let's do a little poll. What is your favourite race that you've either watched or been to? Um, because I'm always curious about how it comes across to you guys. When I'm in a pit lane, it's very hard to actually see what's going on and really experience it. Sometimes I manage to have a good snoop around, but a lot of the time it's a little limited. Um, so what's your favorite race that you've ever been to? Oh my goodness. I don't know how you say your name, Cumies. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, and uh, he's gone for Spain 2016. Um, what a race. That was a cracker. That was when Nicky Lauda gave me one of his um, favorite, favorite ever, um, ever quotes with the whole um, BS gate on the BBC. Right, hang on a minute, Guido's just getting back to me. Hold that thought, let me know which is your favorite race and, and I'm back. <laughs> um, right, let's see if Guido comes online. Fingers crossed he will. Um, oh, Dr. Bob, Canada 2011, my first race. That was such a good race as well. Oh, it was amazing. Um, Brazil, your favorite race. Um, oh, and look, Guido's here. Guido in the house. Excellent. Let's, um, frankly, 
not sit and chat to me for this long. Um, and we're all here for Guido, really. And he's always got lots of fascinating episodes. There he is. Hey. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Good. You? Good. Where are you? Um, actually, I'm at a friend place, and um, it's first time that it's it's our friend place. Look here. Oh wow! Hello. <laughs> it's like that you brought friends to have drinks. Cheers. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's he's doing well because we had a birthday party and uh, at his wife, he's t he's, he turned thirty seven today. So we Hi. went to the park and um, and we for sure we kept one and a half half meters distance, but uh, yeah, it was it was good fun. Lovely to have you on. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm glad you had a nice day. Were you having pizza in the park? You're sorry, what you had? A... Were you having pizza in the park? <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. No, we, because uh, the, 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 the good friends of ours, they have like a lot of, um, uh, how you call it, uh, restaurants and places in Amsterdam. And uh, it was her birthday party and she was like, okay, let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate it with good friends. And then she organized uh, from one place, one good restaurant, some sushi. Then at uh, five o'clock, she organized some, uh, some burgers because they also have a burger place. And then on eight o'clock they organized some some pizza place, so we had some pizza as well. Um, it was good, it was very good, but still, it's not very healthy. But we we'll survived. It's fine. You're allowed yeah, to not be sure. healthy at the moment. And um, Guido, what are you drinking? Um, oh. Corona. <laughs> <Very apt. laughs> I like it very much. Well, cheers. Um, thank you cheers. for joining us. Uh, now, it's been a busy old week for everybody, but what have you been doing during lockdown? Have you been keeping busy or have you been bored? Um, I've actually been quite busy um, because we are dealing with my home. Uh, we destroyed some stuff inside the house. Oh, okay. We did some, um, yeah, we did some, we did some, uh, quite a big stuff in, inside the house because my wife like was like two weeks in, in, uh, inside. She was like, mm, maybe we have to change some things. So the last couple of weeks we have been busy a little bit with that, um, but luckily I also I own a company in uh, in Amsterdam in real estate, so we do a lot of cop, uh, 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 things we buy and then we we make it completely new, and from there on uh, uh, yeah actually we we sell it and um, yeah that that that's quite good. Look, she's also here. That's my Hi. wife. Hi. <laughs> hey. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm very good, thank you very much. I have Me one. too. Oh, cheers. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, the, the thing is, we, 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 st we start to enjoy life a little bit. That's also important. Eh? Definitely. Very important at the moment. No, so life, life keeps me busy. Um, she keeps me busy quite a bit. But uh, the good thing is, you know, I, I, I honestly, I, I miss racing a lot. Uh, of course, we used to have a spa already in, in April. And then uh, in two weeks, we used to have a, a Le Mans. But uh, yeah, nothing happening at the moment. But, but the good thing is that I still have my business running here in Amsterdam and it goes quite well. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy at the moment. How much training have you been doing ready for when you do get racing? Is there much you can do? The first month from uh, quarantine was a lot. I mean, I was training six times a week, flat out, because there was nothing to do. Uh, the last two weeks were a bit not so much, to be honest. Um, but the good thing uh, um, uh, between you and me and, and the, the spectators here, they were, uh, we're going to test again on the 12th of June. Oh, so mate. the next two weeks I have to get start training again because, um, yeah, the thing is, it's, it's the, you know, it's important to get ready again. Uh, in August, we have our first race. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we, we need to get uh, ready for it. Are people throwing things at you, Guido? <laughs> yeah, cigarettes, cigarettes. I'm not going <laughs> to show that. It's not, they are not my cigarettes, but uh, they're going to, they, they throw it here, yes. Um, <laughs> that's good. Uh, and when it comes to missing racing, what is it that you miss the most? Presumably it's not doing press and media days, I'm guessing. Uh, a little bit, a little bit. I, I mean, I was, I mean, I'm not like Kimi. Who doesn't like it at all? But um, <laughs> I, I, I quite like it. I've always been liking it. 
Um, and, and, and to be honest, I miss it. I miss it. Um, I miss the, the, the media things. I miss the racing things. And to be honest, you know, uh, to be, the, the, the last few years, I've been uh, quite, quite well with the WEC Endurance Championship uh, uh, into doing starts. And, and of course, that, that was a bit my thing. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, if, if you don't race for a couple of months and a couple of weeks, you miss it. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy to get started again, but it was, uh, it was a, bit, a bit tough. Are you um, taking part in the virtual Le Mans in a couple of weeks' time? Yeah. What's yeah, that going to be like? I love that. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, hard, really hard because, you know, I spoke to Max a lot uh, we, because we are good friends. And um, uh, we, we, we are, uh, because they have a good team as well, we chatting about it and we, I've been asking uh, what lap times he was doing. And... To be honest, virtual racing for me, I'm, I'm just in the middle of, of you know, starting it, uh, get to know it. Uh, to be honest, we have three very big two mate, t- teammates, and uh, but still, I'm 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 a bit off. I mean, uh, you know, I've been seen uh, seeing re- uh, Jensen racing online. Uh, of course, he's getting better, but still, he's also way off. It's not the 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 time for us, let's say. Yeah, I suppose. Um, younger kids coming through who play and can devote hours to it. Yeah. Um, we can't really do that anymore. Where, as you say, spending hours in a bedroom isn't really acceptable when you're trying to run a business, have a family, all of that stuff. No. No. Also, we, you know, I have a son. He's running around the the the, the whole place. We have to take care of him. Um, we used to have a nanny, but not anymore. So you know, it, it takes time. And uh, of course, sometimes I say to my wife, "Look, listen, I have to get uh, a little bit online to to practice because otherwise uh, I will be wasted." Uh, but anyway, it, it's it's. Uh, I think it's going to be a big race with a lot of big names, and I'm sure, uh, to be honest, with my teammates, I think we're gonna we can do a very good job. Uh, and, and you know, I used to be a platinum driver because I have a platinum driver as as an X one one driver. But in that race, I will be a, a bronze driver. So oh. after six hours, I will be done. I will say good luck, guys, and uh, see you later. Oh, my God. What rig have you got at home? What setup have you got? Uh, to be honest, quite, quite a good setup. Um, um, a, a good teammate of um, uh, Max Verstappen, Atze Kerkhoff. He used to help me with that rig. So I have good screens, good, uh, good, good brake pedals. Um, uh, also, the steering wheel setup is quite nice. But on the end, it's all about uh, the experience you have online, you know, because the lines they drive, the way they do things, it's just completely different than in real life. And to understand that and to, to, to really get, get that uh, last stand out of it, it's so hard. I mean, I've been doing it now for a couple of months because before that, I was not doing anything. But I'm getting better, but not on the way I'm, I'm, I'm happy about it, you know? Um, I'm going to ask you a controversial question because I know you love it. Yeah. Daniel Apt. Obviously, um, you know, he was doing the Formula E race, but he got someone to sit in for him. I mean, the racing world is pretty small. What have, what have you guys all thought about, you know, his subsequent dismissal from Audi, the apology, all of that stuff? To be honest, I think it's uh, it's it's really bullshit what Audi did, and um, uh, the way they dropped him, the way they said, "Look, um, it's not not fair how you do things." You know, he's trying, and uh, it's not probably it's also not his thing to do racing online. And on the other hand, you know, uh, he tried some other stuff with another driver, and it's clever because it's not in real life. Uh, but then after what happened, he said it straight away, like, "Look." Uh, I, I was not the, the driver, but somebody else was the driver, and it's fair because uh, it, it was it was it was it was fair. And, and and to be honest, after that, to get dropped out of Audi it was it's, it's complete it's completely stupid. Because for my feeling, who do they have to put in now? Yeah, I and mean, it's uh, fairly uh, harsh to get the ten thousand pound fine or ten thousand euro fine, and then on top of that. Yeah. for the day later get the dismissal but i suppose you guys even when you're you know off 
hours and not actually in a you know a real car you're still representing a brand of course no no of course but i mean the fine is, is fair enough i mean you know if you're not allowed to do that you get a fine no problem but after that if you get dropped by audi like this i think it's it's completely stupid yeah um as, uh, so much has happened this week in the world of formula one and motorsport in a kind of in a bubble where there's nothing happening. <laughs> um, what do you? What did you make of the Williams news that they've put themselves up for sale? Have you got some spare cash floating around, Guido? Do you fancy owning Williams? Um, I think you know. I mean, of course, you know the the whole brand like Williams. It's it's if they have to sell the whole thing, it, I think it's 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 not good. It's not good for the sport. I think it's uh, it's it's the best one of the best brands in Formula One. They have been doing so, so well. But of course, they've been suffering the last few years, to be honest, you know. Um, uh, but the, the thing is, they, they have to go forward. They have to try to get an investor there. Um, I'm sure they will find something, somebody because uh, I think, you know, everybody wants to go into Formula One, especially with the new rules, you know, with the budget gap. I think it's going to be interesting for everybody. Um, but, you know, if you are Frank Williams, if you're Claire Williams, you know, if you have that brand for many, many years, to be world champion for a long, long time, uh, to have the best car for a long, long time, uh, to be on the podium a couple of years ago, it's, it's you know, it's it's just crazy to, to sell the whole thing now. And uh, it's a pity, to be honest, but, um, you know, I hope they find somebody who is a good investor, who wants to keep the brand going on and try the best out of it. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it was quite a shock because they've always said all along, both Sir Frank and Claire, you know, this team isn't for sale, we're a privateer team. Mm. But, you know, the teams like Williams and, and when you were at Caterham and, you know, the smaller teams, your Mauritius, you know, it's tough. Surviving in Formula One against the likes of Mercedes and Ferrari is mm. full on, isn't it? Uh, it, it is tough, but I think with with the, exactly now with the new rules are coming, I think it's something that um, is, is interesting because you know it's just a hundred forty five million dollar uh, budget. Um, they may have to make the most out of it, and I'm sure some people can do very well with that budget. You know, even though it's sponsorship or even though it's investors from uh, outside or even though it's, it's you, know, you know, money uh, from, from drivers are bringing in. But it's more fair to everybody else because the last few years you see and you have been seeing that, you know, Ferrari or Mercedes, they have a budget like 400, 500, even 600 million, which is a lot. And now everybody has the same budget. Some teams like uh, the, the lower parts of teams, they will maybe have a budget of 100 million. But the top teams, they only have 145 million. So I think it's, it's a good choice. I think it's a good thing what the, 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 the FOM are doing at the moment. And um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how, how things are going. And uh, yeah, you, you know what, what we've been seeing so far, some teams will survive, some teams will not survive. And even the teams will, if, if they're not to survive, then hopefully they will, get, they will get a good investor and get the most out of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, now, everybody I've spoken to when I said I was going to have you on Insta said, you've got to ask him about his 30-day challenge. So I've yeah. got some pictures here that you put up online. And I'm going to talk. So the 30-day idol challenge, this is what it is. Probably been the longest 30 days of your life. Um, so I've got some of the highlights of them. Here's one of them. Uh, this one was a, I think this one was a cracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and my personal favourite, uh, this one. <laughs> can't actually see uh, because I'm in the way and I can't move myself. But uh, talk, to, <laughs> talk to me about the 30 day idol challenge because it's been brilliant. Yeah, you know, we're also a bit bored the last few, few, few weeks. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, uh, when I saw this challenge, I was saying like, look, I probably want to do it because it's something cool. Maybe the people will like it. Maybe the people will not like it. Um, uh, and then it was like, who's my idol? Well, I don't have really an idol, but Maldonado always been something like a cool guy. Uh, I always liked him. We have been friends for a long time. Uh, I really wish, uh, wish uh, really like him as a person, but also um, he's doing 
he's been doing amazingly in Formula One. I mean, he had a had a victory in Barcelona, which was great. And uh, then I said, like, let's let's him be my idol, and let's try to do something the challenge for for thirty days. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I'm I'm happy to be nearly there. Um, he's been texting me a little bit, like, man, really have to do this. Like, do you like it? I said, look, I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna do finish it well. Uh, just a couple of days, and then I'm done with it. But um, yeah, people have been reacting quite well. Uh, they like me. Uh, they like to, to to keep me going. But um, yeah, a couple of days, I'm done, and that that's it. But uh, I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. They've been brilliant. We've loved them. Uh, I don't know, Will Buxton getting in on the action today. That, I mean, that's just <laughs> far, surely. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a joke because yesterday he was responding, uh, this is the best one yet. I said, okay, next one, we put you in. And uh, he was responding again today. But uh, yeah, it was, was good fun. And uh, to be honest, it's just a couple of days and we're done. That's good. They've, they've kept us amused through lockdown. So it's been perfect. You've done yeah. a good job. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, obviously, Dutch Grand Prix. That's a blow, isn't it? Yeah, quite a bit. But it's, it's, it's understandable, to be honest. Yeah. Because on the end, you know, there's been a, a lot of races on the calendar for, for many years. Um, I'm sure that they have the much favour than, than the Dutch Grand Prix because of the new for this year. And I, it's it's understandable that they go for that that race, you know. It's it's because I, I've been hear, hearing that uh, you know they, they they will go to Silverstone, Hungary, Barcelona, and I understand that they go for that that race and not the Dutch Grand Prix. And of course, we we miss it, and uh, we miss it quite a lot. But I'm sure we have it again next year, and uh, we make something out of it. Look, oh, this. Uh, <laughs> what, what am I looking at? <laughs> well. If, Stephanie is it's it's actually our birthday girl. She turned thirty six or thirty seven. Let's go for thirty six. Well, thirty six. <laughs> Look, gonna... oh, oh, dancing queen! I love it. <laughs> so she, like she, she party. Happy birthday! So they, 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 they invite us in the park today, and um, it was a very lovely day. And now we're gonna have a little zip um, uh, in in, Cheers, in her house. Cheers. He's not saying one and a half meters, but <laughs> nobody knows. It's absolutely fine. Yeah, it's, this is one and a half meters. This is one and a half meters. <laughs> I miss I miss England so much. Oh, She's from England, thank actually. You. Yes. It's been nice here as well. The weather's been delightful. And the modeling edge. <laughs> I love that. I feel yeah. like I'm at the party, and I'm sure yeah. people watching will feel like they're at the party as well. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> and uh, all your friends, do they like Formula One? Are they like down with what you do and like your career and everything else? Um, some do, some some not really because, you know. But in the end, I think in Holland, there is a lot of people who have been interested in, the, in, in Formula One over the last few years, especially because of Max. Um, what he's been doing, the results, uh, the crazy things, uh, the way he is. <laughs> Uh, the big talent we have in Holland at the moment, I think it has been picked up uh, quite well in Holland. I think there has been a lot more, much more fans than when I was driving, to be honest. Um, but I think it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a, a big sport at the moment in Holland. And um, we love it all. Uh, friends are speaking about it. And, and that's good because yeah, in the end, we, we always want to be successful. And with him... I still think we have a, like a big future Formula One champion. Do you think he can win it with Red Bull? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he has a has a big shot uh, this year. Of course, we we were like like, like the few years uh, before we were like, ah, he has a shot now. He has a uh, you know has a possibility. But to be honest, I think this year was the the the, the one. Um, and still, I still think that that he has a possibility. Um, but still, you know, Lewis is there. Um, <laughs> he, he has the experience. Uh, he knows how to win the World Championship. And I think he will be the, the biggest competitor of Max. 
Yeah, it's going to be an interesting year when it finally gets going. July the 5th, they reckon, will be the first race in Austria. The deal's kind of now been done. Yeah. We're expecting a calendar out tomorrow. They're talking about reverse grids, though, for the race on Saturday. Are you in favour of messing around with the Saturday format? I wish I had that. <laughs> <laughs> At least I could start in the front. Hold the uh, but it would, it, Yeah, I, it, it would only keep on going for a couple of laps, but... Uh, you know, I think I think it's, it will be a good idea. Um, I think Formula One needs to find a different way of uh, of this year, um, without the spectators, without uh, a lot of people on the track, without probably the media. Uh, but the good thing is they they will start. Um, uh, I think everybody's still waiting that to to get started, but uh, to get the reverse grid, I don't know. I mean, it will be interesting, but still, after a couple of laps, you get past easily. Uh, it will be uh, some nice battles, but it will go close. It will be like 10 laps, tw maybe 20 laps. It will be back to normal. Yeah. So it's not the long-term answer to Formula One's problems. No, but the, the good thing is in, in, in uh, what they presented uh, the last few weeks with the, with the new rule, with the new budget gap. I think, to be honest, I think that's the right way to go. I think that's a very, very good step forward to uh, to the whole future of Formula One. Um, and, and from there on, it can be much more closely because, you know, a smaller team, they have much more chance to, to the biggest team because, you know, it, it, the gap was always very, very big the last few years. And, um, yeah, I think now it, it's much more fair like this. Yeah, we hope so. Anyway, that's I mean, the, it needs, something needs to be done, as you say. Yeah. The, the top teams are so far ahead of everybody else. Is it is it tough for a driver if you're in a team that you know has almost no chance of even scoring points, let alone winning? Um, yeah, of course, I had the experience. To be honest, um, with Kachum, we had a team. We were always battling with Marussia at that time in 2013. Um, and especially the, the, the first, first few races, we were like, okay, you know, uh, after 20 or 30 or whatever laps, uh, we used to have blue flags from Sebastian Vettel because he was leading the race. And, and uh, you know, in 2006, he used to be my teammate and I used to be either close or used to beat him. And suddenly, after 20 laps, you get a blue flag of, of him. And uh, that car was just three and a half seconds faster than, than, than us. And the first few races, I was struggling with that be honest but after that it's like you know you have to get used to it understand it you know where you are um, and on the end you have to understand that your teammate is your your, your biggest rival biggest competitor because he has the same material you have the same car and you have to beat him and um, yeah after a few races I understand it uh, I understood it and, and then from there on you go and uh, to be honest I think the second part of my one on one races, uh, it went quite well, but still, you know, be, being racing in the, in the back, it's, it's it's tough because you want yeah. to compete, you want to be on the podium, you want to compete for points, uh, and not racing for you know, 15, 16, 17. How does wet compare to F1 in your mind? Um, much more open, although. I have to say, I think the, the last couple of years, uh, Formula One has been much more open with the new owners. You know, we've been doing much more social media. The whole paddock people, there are uh, they, they are much more people inside the paddock. Uh, they are open for more guests. Uh, so I think they made a really, really good step forward. Uh, but still in WEC, it's a bit like, like a family there, you know, because you have been racing to, to all the guys there. Uh, from Buemi to uh, Kamui Kobayashi, Conway, you know, I've been racing for many, many years to, with them. And if we come on the track, it's like we are friends, and we've been friends for for many, many years. And it's open. You can we can you can enter the the garage there. You can have a chat with them. And Formula One, everything is closed. Everything is secret. It's 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 a little bit different, um, but still. I mean, I was a uh, Formula One race last year. I think they made a really, really big, big step forward. Uh, but I have to say, the WEC, is, it's, it's an enjoyable series. Um, especially with, with LMP2, it's, it's a really cool car to race with. Um, it's like two, three seconds slow only than, than F2. And um, I think, you know, I, I enjoy it. Uh, because after Formula One, to be honest, I stopped more or less. 
Yeah. Like I, I was fed up with racing and I was like, you know, what, what should you do? And hey, maybe you have to start a business back back in Amsterdam. And I did, which was quite nice. But, but always in, in my mind, I was like, I'm, I was missing racing. And then uh, yeah, Fritz von Heert, the big uh, owner of the supermarkets of Jumbo, they called me up and they're like, you want to you wanna race with me? And they want to have some fun and uh, yeah, help me out. And uh, to be honest, I love it right now, the way, way I live my life, uh, the way I can race. I've been winning, winning a race last week, last year in, uh, in Japan, which was amazing because uh, it was the first bronze ever driver who win a race in LMP2. So, uh, yeah, we, we, I, I love it. I love it right now. I love that. Oh, someone's just asked, will we see you at the Indy 500 someday? No, no, never, 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 never. <laughs> um, we have a Dutch guy now. It's it's like uh, Rinus VK. I think he also gets sponsored by uh, uh, a Jumbo uh, guy. I think he is really, really big, big talent. Um, and he has a big future in America, especially the Indy 500. He's supposed to do it this year. And uh, I wish him all the best, but I will never do it. I will keep on racing with, uh, with the LMP2. And uh, we'll see where, where we end up. But um, so far, what we do is, is nice. But the Indy 500 is not uh, really my thing. Okay. Look, I'm going to let you go party. We've taken up loads of your time. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, of course. Go drink. Go be happy. Send our love to everybody there. Yeah. This is Yoshi, by the way. He's the husband of the wife. Hey, Hi. <laughs> I love you. I love you. And... and um, Thank you very much. I hope uh, all the best for you and uh, we keep Thank in contact. You. Yeah. See you soon, Guido. Bye bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye bye. <laughs> so there we go. Guido joined us in the end. Hurrah. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. He's a fab guy. Very funny. Um, his one year, I think, in Formula One didn't really do justice to his talent and what he could have bought. But uh, the Dutchies are very lucky to have him and uh, he does a bit of TV and um, comments on Formula One and his, uh, his great value. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. Hopefully you've, um, you've been able to have a laugh, join in um, and, and listen to Guido on what he had to say. And uh, he reckons, obviously, that the new rules are going to make a significant difference in Formula One. And I think that would be fantastic wouldn't it if we just close the grid up and make it a bit more competitive we shall see what happens um anyway i'm sorry for those of you uh who have missed most of the chat but this will go up on um on here as a story and i'll try and get it up on youtube as well so that you can uh, have a look and enjoy it um have i ever been to zandvoort said gordon yes i have i went there for british gts and it was fantastic and i was made to do a piece to camera on the beach in the freezing cold uh, with a blow up inflatable whale. Obviously. <laughs> uh, good times, really good times. Right, next week um, I will do another one of these. Hopefully that's okay with you. Um, I think Tatiana Culverant's going to join me uh, and have a good old natter. Uh, and she's taking part in the virtual Le Mans as well. So it should be really good, really interesting to hear what she's got to say, how she's been training, uh, what she's going to be up to this year, all of those sorts of things. But um, for all of you that have joined us, thank you very much. Stay well, stay safe, and uh, I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.